Hi everyone, I'm Natalie of SoHungryHippie.com and we're going to mix it up today a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a sweet little baby pumpkin. These are my little softies. It's a pattern in my shop. You can get it in print or in PDF, whatever you want. And it does include pattern pieces. So I'm going to make a little baby size on camera here. I do want you to know there are three size options. This is the large, which I think is awesome. And I made this one with upcycled denim and an Anna Maria velvet print that's a few years old that a friend gifted to me. And then there's the medium size, which is kind of just right in between. And you can totally make these squish down with some hand threaded needlework. But a lot of times I just wanna make a bunch of them, have a cute tablescape for the holidays. These pumpkins, as you know, are relevant for October and November. So you'll get a good two months of use out of them if you wish. You can make them Halloween style. You can make them all one fabric. I call mine patchwork because I use six different fabrics most of the time on my pumpkins. This one you can see I just did too. So if you're on Instagram, I'm gonna turn this live off and encourage you to hop over to my Facebook page, So Hum Hungry Hippie, <laughs> or my YouTube page, because then you can see the sewing machine angles and all of that, okay? So if you just give me a second, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I've turned Instagram off. And now I can just worry about this. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so good to see you guys here. Thank you for joining me. I'm finally myself. Thanks for sticking with me last week. I see Tamara and Beth and Tina, Leanne. Awesome, everyone. Hi, Liddy. Maureen, Rena. Hi. Hi, Kat, Betty Mom, Elizabeth. Woohoo! Angie, everyone's tuning in. How awesome. Thank you for being here. So let's get making this pumpkin. Now, surprisingly, these really don't take long. Once you make one, I, I feel like it's just a repetitive sewing memory thing and you can turn on a show and you know get all the fall vibes going. So what you're gonna need, quilting cotton. I am going to be cutting up, it's all Ruby Star on this one. Is it? No, I've already cut out some pieces. I like to mix and max, match collections. What's with my speech today, Ramel? It's, it's cold. <laughs> it's like 40 degrees out. Yeah, it is freezing cold out right now. We'll, we'll be complaining about that for the next six months. <laughs> Anywho, I'm going to use some of Crystal Manning fabric here from Moda, along with some Ruby Star on my example pumpkin. In my kits, which I'm so excited about, we've been talking about doing kits for a long time, but because there's so many ingredients, we didn't know if we could do it. So we have, in your kit, you're gonna get wool felt for your leaves in this awesome green color. You're gonna get six fabrics. They might be cut like this, but at the end of the day, it'll be the equivalent of five fat quarters. I just wanna make sure you get a good mix a -roo of different fabrics so you can you know make it spicy you will also get cinnamon sticks for your stem see how on this one it's a cinnamon stick now i've also done felt just roll up felt you have a pattern piece in the pattern for a felt stem i've also seen people get really creative and create a stuffed fabric stem or collect some sticks from their yard and put those in. Feel free to explore and make it awesome. You will also get thread to do your leaves. It will be, it might not be a complete like brand new skein like this. It might be just a section of thread, you know, like I send you a big section because what I think makes these special is the fact that we use different pops of color. We're not going for super realistic. We're going for cute and pretty. <laughs> and then you're also gonna get some Spanish moss. And I will show you why I put that on during this demo. 
And you'll also get a bunch of polyfill. It'll be way more than this, what I'm showing here, because we have to vacuum pack it down because that stuff is crazy. It'll bust a box open. You'll get the pattern. And what else? You'll get crushed walnuts because we, I prefer to weigh these down. There's some weight to this. Now, if you don't want to put the crushed walnuts in, you don't have to. It will just be really light and just know that. I like having some weight to my stuff. Yeah, yeah, the cinnamon sticks, yeah. Now, for usually when I'm sewing my pumpkins, I add in cinnamon, like the spice. I sprinkle it all over inside. And I wanted to send that in the kit. And then my post office guy, Glenn, he's so amazing. He's like, mm -mm, don't do it. It might get flagged. And I was like, for what? Cinnamon. And he's like, you know, D-R-U-G-S. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> so I'm not going to send you cinnamon. I'm, you can just add that from your kitchen. Fabulous. <laughs> All right, let's get going. That was a Ina Garden reference um, on Food Network. I love her, but she's always like, and it's fabulous. <laughs> okay, so yes, Cindy, wine cork stem. That would be super cute too. You could even drink two bottles of wine and glue them together so it's a little taller. Um, Kat says hers still smells good this year. That's awesome. That is such good news. Mine, I swear to you guys, I used to make these like crazy. And I would take 50 at a time to a craft fair that I did every year at the Undley Pumpkin Patch in England when we lived there. Ramel was stationed in England. Um, and I would sell out. People love these things. I think it's just because they're so darn cute. And it would make a really sweet little gift for a friend. You know, take them maybe a little baby pumpkin, bottle of wine or a bottle of apple cider from La Pasix Orchard, maybe a bushel of apples. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just cute and fun. I also thought if you have any cork scraps, you could totally just roll up the pattern piece and use that as a stem too. You don't even need to worry about closing it. You can if you want. You could just do a line of glue gun here and, and close it all the way. But sometimes I like the whimsy of stuff. Just, you know, what am I trying to say? Just stick it in there and be happy. All right, let's get to it, Ramel. What do you think? Uh, let's do it. Uh, let's move to overhead camera. OK, so here's my little baby pumpkin. Oh. Oh, she's so cute. Maybe a smidge. And here are my six sides, which it tells you on the pattern piece right here. It says cut six, so you won't get confused. Now, just be aware that because the large is so big, on the pattern piece page, I have the leaf, the stem, and small and medium. And then on the opposite side, I have one for the large, and you cut it on the fold. So if you're going to make the large, just trace that real quick. You can just use computer paper, lay it on top, and trace your large piece. And then use the other side and just cut them out. You know what I mean? We had to try and conserve some trees on this pattern. Okay, so here are four of them. Now I've already sewn two together. You know what? I'm going to make these two different. So let's cut some from here. Ooh, I want to use this one, this sweet little flower print from Ruby Star. Love it, love it, love it. And this is what I do. I stack all six fabrics at one time, and I cut it all at once. You know how I roll. Can you zoom in, Ramel, so that they can actually... Are we able to go down at all? Okay, so I need to move up then. And it, it doesn't have to be, you know, rocket science exact, you guys. Just cut out your shapes, do your best. It will work out in the end. It's kind of like a patchwork quilt. 
It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect to be cute and pretty. Okay, so now I've got these two. I like to kind of uh, mix up the colors. So in other words, I would not put these two right next to each other. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I would. I want to see some contrast. Exactly, like Ramel just said, I want to see some contrast. We should probably get you a mic, Ramel. Oh, I do have a mic, I just don't have a mic. But I will. So go to front view and I'll start sewing these up. What I like to do is two at a time. Just put them right sides together and we're going to sew down one side. <coughs> of course I get dry when I'm on camera. Did you make me a hot toddy, Ramel? I am going to get you one. I know what a hot toddy is. <laughs> you know what a hot toddy is? Yes. Or maybe some, uh, what's something real warming? A brandy? I would never drink that. <laughs> Love cinnamon. Is a pattern available as PDF? Yes, it is. Yes. Do you want to grab the link, Ramel, and answer uh, Kathy? Yeah, so I've got these two. I've got these two sewn. And now I'm going to sew these two. You don't have to get real persnickety and pin this. See how I'm just lining them up? Looks like my bobbin ran out. No it, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. It just came loose for some reason. Can you switch to front view? Yeah. Uh, this is the one, right? Yes, that's the PDF. All right. Here's that. Oh, I should show you guys this cute little pin cushion Mariana made me from Marvelous. Auntie M on Instagram. So cute. All right, I'm going to sew down this side. You don't have to interface these. That's another bonus. If you want to, you can. You can use SF101. But I, I never do. Hey, I'll, I'll save the SF101 for bags. You know what I mean? You already answered a question about the sweater if you make it. No, my sweater I actually bought. I wish I could crochet this nicely, but I actually bought it. It's super fall vibes, so I thought I should wear it today. But if you want to learn to crochet one like this, you should follow my friend Selena. I've had her on the lives before, Selena Baca Creations. Because she'll teach you how to crochet one. So now I've got three sets. And I'm just going to put these together and again, sew down one side. So I start at the top and I'm just going to start sewing down one side again. And I do it this way because then I can really control color placement. Like I said earlier, I don't want to of the two similar shades next to each other, I want to space them out a bit. So now we're here and we've got our last section. And I'll place this right sides together again. Now I don't start at the super tippy tippy top because I do want a little bit of an opening there for stuffing and spices and all that good stuff. So Instead of the tippy tippy top, I'm starting about an inch down. Why don't you go back to the sewing machine view? Have you guys seen this Dahlia? I posted it on Facebook and Instagram yesterday. I can't believe how big she is. She's amazing. It's like as big as your, your head, pretty much. It is as big as my head. <laughs> And I got a big old bobblehead. Okay, so now we've got this last side open. And again, right sides together. I'm just going to start about an inch down from the top. 
and sew the last side up. Now I'm using a 2.2 millimeter stitch length just so it's nice and tight because these, these seams do get a little stressed when we're stuffing the pumpkin. Okay, back to front. So now it's all stitched together and I'm just gonna turn it right sides out through that opening in the top. Now. Now, I'm gonna tell you this because I've done it more than once. If you kind of, uh, how should I say it? Muck up your bottom of the pumpkin, do not stress it. <clears throat> Don't stress it at all. It's gonna sit on its bottom. <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna see anything. And if you wanted to, on one of these, I even did a little felt circle because I kind of like overlapped the seams a little bit and it to me as a sewing person it looked like a tiny little mistake whatever carry on cover it or don't worry about it that's my motto right i'm not advocating sloppy i'm just advocating being kinder to yourself because when it doesn't matter why worry about it now where did i put my kit here it is <sighs> I'm going to open this gorgeous kit that I just made. And Ramel was here. I spilled all my walnut shells all over the place. Don't do that. Oh, I don't have to open that. I prepared. So I like to put my walnut shells in a little baking glass. And then I'm going to pour some in. Maybe you should go to overhead for this part. So this is also when I will put in my spices. I'll put... I'll pour these in. You don't need a ton. Well, it's up to you. You can put however much you want to. You want it real heavy, you can put it all in. If you just need a little bit of heft, just put a, a smidge in. Okay, I like to mush it around. And then, <clears throat> so now I would put in my spices. And then is the fun part. I love this part. Just start shoving in the polyfill. Or you can cut up, if you have tons of scraps, just cut them up with a rotary cutter. If you've seen my confetti case pattern, cut them up that small, no joke. Don't try to shove in huge scrap pieces because you'll get bulges and weirdness. Cut them up really small with a rotary just over and over again, and then shove those in. Anything to reuse, upcycle, save money. The stuffing portion is really up to you how stuffed you want it. I like to make sure that I'm really pinching it into those seams. Now it looks kind of weird and misshapen right now, and I know that, but it won't when we close this up. I like to put on soothing music or a a nice podcast so that when I'm making these, I'm just relaxed. Chill, chill, chill mix, yeah. Who doesn't like chill mix? That's why we need you a mic because you're saying fun stuff and nobody can hear you. <laughs> okay, back to front view. <clears throat> I am going to take. I kind of do this a little bit out of order to just save myself a little time. You would think right at this stage I would start closing this up, but I don't want to do that because I have just threaded my needle, which requires me concentration. And so what I'm going to do first is sew my two pieces of leaf together. I like to use two pieces because I think it's, it's a little bit more, uh, what is that word I'm looking for? a little more heft and it just looks a little better than just one layer however one layer can totally be cute recently 
I've even been doing sort of a trapunto look. So I'll just take a smidge of polyfill and stuff it in the leaf. And that's what gives a little bit of dimension on the leaf. That's new. What is trapunto? Trapunto is a kind of quilting where there are sections that puff up. And it's, it's a whole style. Like if you saw a trapunto quilt, you would think, whoa, I'm probably saying it wrong. Maybe it's trapunto. I have no idea. I'll just say things how I feel like it, right? Uh, let's go to overhead and I'm going to show them how I start this. So to save yourself some time, have your two layers like this and start in here. Start from the inside. Felt really doesn't have a wrong side. So just decide what is wrong, wrong and right side for you and put your knot in there. And now it's closed, okay? Can you zoom in anymore? Because this is this is a blanket stitch and I just want to show them. There we go. Perfection, Ramal. I think we'll zoom in all the way to the ball of the needle. Oh my. Okay, so I'm gonna just do this at the start. This is just a start. Now I'm gonna take my needle and I do about a thumb width, and I'm going through both layers at once. The needle comes up, I'm gonna pull it, but not all the way. I'm gonna leave a loop, see this? And I'm gonna put my needle through it and then pull all the way. And that's what gives you that little leg. So for instance, this is how it will look. You know, how silly of me, I should have used a brighter thread. Let me switch because I really want you guys to see this. A lot of times the simplest little things are just so much easier if you can just see it done in front of you rather than reading a description, you know? Oh, I need my glasses. What? I'll put you back in front of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Good to know. So I won't make weird faces. Okay, so I'm gonna do it with pink thread. I'm gonna tie a knot in the end and start again. And I'll I'll do this leaf for you, but I won't do the second one because I don't want to take too long. Okay, so now here we are. I'm going to come up from the bottom, both layers, catch the loop, and pull. And there's the leg. Now again, from the bottom, tell me if I'm out of view, Ramal, because and then through the loop, and there's the leg. And now I'm coming back up, both layers. So this is from the bottom. And I pull it up. And I have that little loop, stick my needle through the loop, and pull. And that's all there is to it. Wow. You can finish a quilt like this. A lot of women used to finish, instead of doing binding, they would do this along the edges. And that's why I think it's called a blanket stitch. <clears throat> or they'd make blankets from old clothes and sew the layers together and on the edge they do this because it just it's so pretty and it encases everything use your finger to measure so that your stitches are somewhat even but again don't beat yourself yourself up over it And so this is what I would do all the way around the leaf, but I won't do it right now because I don't want you guys to get bored. Oh, you're doing it really fast. Oh yeah, I can do this real fast now. Now, <clears throat> I would go all the way around and then I'd be up here, but I'm down here now, so let's do it from here. I'm going to put a smidge of polyfill in. You don't need much. Don't be tempted to overfill it. And then the key with this part, going down the center of the leaf, is you don't want to go perfectly straight. It doesn't look natural. So you want a bit of a curve, just like a leaf in nature, the stem or the vein. What is that called? Where's Betty Mom? That bit will have, it will have a slight curve. It won't be perfectly straight like ever, right? So I just kind of curve it a touch. 
See how I'm curving just a bit? And now I'm going to curve back because I want to end up in the middle. That's something I learned in some art class. I don't know where. But curves are in nature. Straight lines are not usually. Oh my gosh, it's called a midriff. Midrift? Midrib. Mid midrib. Midrib. Nice. Learn something every day. Okay, so I, I guess this will look silly if I don't finish this, so I'll just do it really fast. Maybe I could tell a ghost story. <laughs> I was so tempted last night. <clears throat> Go to front view, Ramel. <clears throat> Sorry for all my... <clears throat> Um, yesterday I had to go to Walgreens and it's one of my favorite places because their magazine rack and their candy aisle is the bomb. And, uh, they have these new issues that come out from time life every season, every spooky season. And I was so tempted to buy it. It was all about the Salem witch trials in Massachusetts, you know, back in the day. But of course, it's not going to be anything new. Like I've read about it 8,000 times. What do I need to buy a $14 magazine for? So I passed it up. But as you can see, I'm still thinking about it. I do have a needle threader. Have you guys ever seen one of these? Sure, after I get this hair off my face. Okay, so a needle threader is really handy. You stick it through the eye. Oops. Just maybe back up the camera next time. If I'm, or tell you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm through, I'm through the needle, the eye of the needle here. Okay. I'm through the eye of the needle. And this needle threader has a hole here. So I can just stick my yarn or my, my floss through that hole and then pull it through the eye of the needle. And now my needle is threaded. Wow. Yeah, I love those things. But I didn't know what they were for years. So there you are. Put you back to front. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm gonna continue down this side so we have a finished, at least one finished leaf. Anytime you have to start new thread, just start from the inside before it's closed so that your knot is um, hidden at the end as best you can. I just really bogarted that stitch up. Oh, well, carry on. Almost there. This side is definitely not as good as my first side. But how can you not be cute with pink thread? So here we go. I will trim the ends and then before I get rid of this needle, I'm going to sew it to the pumpkin. You can hot glue these leaves on at the very end if you prefer, completely fine. But what I like to do, because you know I like to save time, is I'm gonna put in my cinnamon stick. Why don't you go to the overhead, but just back up a little bit because we're awfully close. And what I do is kind of close the pumpkin and attach the leaf at the same time, but you definitely don't have to. So my, my leaf is still on here, and I think I'm going to put it over here because this really strong orange, I like to just kind of, actually, you know what? I'm going to put it on a different, I'm going to sew the other end. Can you zoom in a little bit on that? Um, maybe just a, a tiny bit. This end is more unperfect to me, so I'm going to put this end up at the top. So I'm switching the plan here. But you see how I just adjust and do that? I'm gonna put the less perfect end up at the top because then it is hidden. Once we close this baby up, it's hidden with Spanish moss. 
So I'm going to thread this again. I think it's cool. It is cool. And I use it all the time. So it's one of those little sewing contraptions that you think you don't need. And then when you need it, you really need it. Okay, so I'm going to start on the inside here and come up. I'm going to go across the pumpkin way over here. And then I'm going to come across again and I'm going to pull. Oop, I didn't have my knot big enough. If that happens to you, just make your knot bigger because that's all it is. And that's also why you don't want to overstuff your pumpkin too much. I'm going to cinch it in here. Now, because I've done these a million times, I'm going to also add my leaf. <laughs> this is what I do. And now I'm going to go on this side and across. And I'm grabbing a couple layers of fabric there. So it's, it's stronger than you think. And I just keep doing this. And I don't even care how messy this looks because it's all going to be hidden up. Thank you. I'm running out of thread. My piece of thread was too small, but you get the idea here, right? Can you go to front view? Now for your baby pumpkin, you may want to cut down your cinnamon stick if that's what you're using or not. I did not. Now, I've also got my glue gun over here, all heated up and ready to go. Needle threaders are great. Am I missing any questions, Ramel? Are you keeping an eye on it? Uh, yeah, sort of, kind of. That means no. <laughs> you said sort of, kind of. That's a no, then. <laughs> uh, no, I, I haven't seen any questions. OK. We're just going to finish this baby up, and then I have some exciting stuff to show you guys. <clears throat> I really need this needle threader. I am realizing more and more. It's like in the last year, my close-up sight has just tanked. And I'm, I'm going to have a word with my eyes. <laughs> I'm going to tell them off in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to do a double knot and then close this pretty little girl up and then add the Spanish moss and it's all finished. And so a lot of times I'll just batch sew these, put on British Baking Show and just go, uh, go to town, have a view of the leaves outside. I love me some autumn vibes. I even brought um, my little smelly candle and I wanted to have that going. And then we forgot the lighter, didn't we? We can just go back to do what we learn from watching those shows uh, alone. They can't hear you, Ramel. <laughs> so. Okay, so now <clears throat> it's getting all stitched up. Close it as best you want. If you are fast at this part and it's good enough, it really is good enough because it all gets covered up. If you want to be meticulous, be meticulous. You got to live your life. Okay, so I am going to do a little surgical knot here from my OR days. All right, Dunsies. Now let's go to overhead. Oh, she can? Dalva's got supersonic hearing. All right, switch to overhead, Ramel. And then let's put on a little Spanish moss. Now the key with this stuff is you don't need much. This is way too much for a baby pumpkin. And, and this is how easy it is. I put some 
glue, isn't it funny how you have to have the second one pushing it out? So I have to have this little second glue stick in here. And I just layer this up. Now this is hot AF, so do not touch this with your fingers. <clears throat> I just, whoop, I do that. Pull it apart a bit, I do that. Yes, this is messy, who cares? Anything fun is probably messy. You can do one leaf, you can do two leaves. See on this one I did two. And it needs some Spanish moss to hide my little hand stitched opening there. You could also do another accoutrement instead of Spanish moss if you want to. You come up with something, do it. Here we are. Two baby pumpkins. Switch to front view, Sacramo. So, kind of cute, right? I like the Spanish moss. I do too. And I, I like using the glue gun because it's also kind of a secondary hold on that stem, keeping it in. Doesn't matter if you use a cinnamon stick, a twig, or felt. It's just like another way that it keeps hold. Now, when I used to sell these, I would put glue across the bottom and my little label, my little, it said Hungry Hippie, and I would glue my label there so that if anyone wanted to get another one in the future, they knew where to go. So think of that if you're going to sell these at craft fairs. So to recap, we have the pattern. It's in print or in PDF. We also have kits for you available, a few of those with Ruby Star and Moda fabrics, and I will be coordinating the pieces, so it's gonna look good. <clears throat> and all those links are in the description box, by the way. What's the question? Is Spanish moss horticultural or some kind of weird craft fabric? So it's actually a natural product. Um, it's grown, this is grown in Mexico, and it's, it was live at one point, but now it's dried, kind of like buying dried flowers. You can also get it in green. So, you know, if you uh, wanted to go out and get some, they're gonna be at your craft stores basically. But in my kit, I will be sending you some. So no worries about that. Any more questions? Uh... Will the sold out kits for the totes come back? If you're talking about the Easy Shopper Tote, yes. I just saw Moda sent me some more fabric in the mail. So as soon as that gets here, those will be relisted. A lot of times, um, I think it's not super clear and we're working on how to make it more clear. If a product is still showing and it says sold out, click into that product and you'll see a gray box that says notify me when available. That means I'm bringing it back. And okay. sometimes it takes a few days, but most times it takes a few weeks. So, but when you click that and put your email in, as soon as I load those up, it will email you automatically. Yes. Bethany says um, she puts little flowers on hers. Yes, Bethany's are very cute. <clears throat> she has little flowers on the top of her pumpkins. If you look for her in the Facebook group, um, you should post those again, Bethany, if you have them. And yes, walnut shells, it would be so cute as a pin cushion if you filled the whole thing with walnut shells. You'll just need to make sure it's really closed well so that you're not, your pumpkin isn't pooping walnut shells all over your sewing table. Okay. <clears throat> Something like that. I did want to sh share with you guys, uh, I have a ton of Elixir charm packs. And so I decided I needed another patchwork quilt, all in Elixir. And I want to show you my progress so far. And this is minimal time sewing. This is like nothing. I'm blurry. So this is one big row. These are five cut or five inch squares. You know what, I'm gonna grab a, a charm pack to show you guys. This is uh, the easiest version of my patchwork quilt pattern. 
if you use charms, all the cutting is done for you. And so you're just sewing them together into blocks. And so I bet maybe I sewed an hour and I got this done, which is the first row, plus more, more blocks, which I'll be sewing together this weekend. And I will show you my finished quilt, probably in a reel on Instagram or something like that. But it's just all the same collection, just randomly sewn together, mix matched. And uh, I'll have that done really soon. And that's going to give me, I believe, a 72 inch square quilt. So lots of these left if you want any. If you want to do the size that I'm going to end up doing, you want to get seven packs of the charms, seven packs of these. But I love time saving. I love it like it's my business. So anytime I can cut out some of the work, I'm going to. All right, so there's that. Then we got Reverie in, you guys, and this is so amazing. I've already cut some fabric off and I'm deciding what bag I'm gonna make, hopefully this weekend on Sunday with this. So we've got canvas in blue. And these are leopards, by the way. We've got it in pink. And we've got it in the golden rod color. So it's pretty awesome. And everything, Reverie, all the other fabrics, the quilting cottons, everything is listed, now shipping. So you want the coordinating print? I think I'm gonna do this one and this one together for the inside. If you go to overhead, you can see it a little better, Vimal. Um, because they just, it's a perfect match. So this, this orangey print has pink and gold in it. Can you zoom in? And so it picks up the orange flecks of the leopard and the gold. I don't know. It's just in the pink for this background. It's just perfect. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, it's metallic for sure. And then you could also, if you prefer green, we have the green that goes with it. This is called billiards. Also metallic. Yeah, it has flecks of gold in it. All of the almost, well, I should, I'm not going to say all because it's not all. But a lot of the prints have the metallic. And then we have this beautiful blue clouds. I think this would be so pretty on the inside of a bag. It's still light enough to really see what's inside, but it's strong and graphic. Can you move to overhead? Yeah. So we've got a bunch of those listed, ready to ship. And Firefly should be shipping any minute. It should be getting here soon. If you're waiting on Sarah Watts Firefly, it's coming really, really soon. OK, so there's that. Um, we're going to comment in the comments this week on our winner for our weekly prize draw because it, I think sometimes people are not staying the whole time and, and knowing that they win. So I will be commenting the winner from last week. So be watching for that. What else were we going to talk about, Ramel? I should have brought my list. Zipper jigs are relisted. I had somebody tell me that they recently sat down and put all of their pulls on the tape all at one time, which is, I said it in a video and I had since forgotten about it, but that's what I do too. Whenever I sit down to sew and I'm going to need zippers for my bags, I just put all the pulls on at one time and then I move them around and cut to measure as needed. So we have restocked those. What else can you think of? I feel like there was something else. This just made me make a cup of pumpkin spice coffee, says Tamara. I, and I bet you need it after being back in the Midwest, Tamara. Oh, man. And Gypsy Robin says flax seeds with lavender tossed into the pumpkin is great. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Marita, your patchwork pattern is very addicting. Yay. I love it. I love making patchwork because it just, it allows you to just sit and sew and not worry, not worry about anything. All right, perfect. 
Well, I think I'm going to run through these comments and answer anything else. If I didn't see yours, it's not, um, I just didn't see it. I'll get to it. And uh, remember, in the email this weekend, I will have all the links coming up really soon. Let's see. Today is the 14th. So in nine days, we open the second round of this the Surprise Vinyl Club. And it, it's exciting. It's super bright. It's what you would expect from me. It's um, wild and fun and colorful. And I think you're going to love it. So if you want in, that club is going to be open for two days only. So the, the email on the 23rd, that's Sunday, and then it'll be open Monday, and then I'll close it Tuesday just to keep things, to keep everyone together, to keep everyone, you know, getting their vinyl on the same schedule and that kind of thing. So get in there, open those emails. The next few weeks are big ones, and you'll have some surprises in the next few. So make sure to open them. Um, no, I didn't make YouTubes in England. I, it was before I under were before I really knew about YouTube. So I didn't, I, sometimes I wish I had because it was so nice over there. Um, can you add some zipper pulls for a double pull and single pulls all together? Yeah. So I think what you're asking there, Liddy is for instance, like on the clam shelf. The clam up pattern, <clears throat> this is a by Annie pattern and she requires a double pull. And so what you would do is when you're putting on your pulls, you just make sure that you're putting them on so the round parts meet in the middle. So instead of putting all the pulls on and facing one direction, you would put one on or three on or five on this direction and then go to the other end of the tape and put five on this direction. And then you'll have them meeting. Does that make sense? So that they do this. Which these kits are relisted, you guys. I, I did a bunch of kits with this elixir on the outside and a coordinating print on the inside. So if you want those, go grab them. Uh, I'll, I'll add it later, Ramel. And it'll be in the, I'll email it this weekend also, Sunday. No worries. Clam up kit. Yes, clam up kit. That's it. All right. Well, if you make some pumpkins, tag me. I want to share your work. Um, I often share on my Facebook page. And again, if you're not in the Facebook group, please join us. We'd love to see what you're sewing too. So have a great weekend. Take some time to sew, and I'll see you soon. Bye.